Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be very spooky and different and I don't know if you're ready. I don't think I'm ready. Um, but in this video, I am going to be transforming into the ghost that haunts me. I'm here in my dining room slash kitchen because this is one of the places where it loves to mess around. It plays with stuff in the kitchen and likes to press the microwave. Um, it either shows 777 or 666, I guess, depending on its mood. Um, and the second place that it has the most activity in is my bedroom. But the worst story ever happened in my bedroom, so we're not going to be in there. <laughs> not for this. Um, but yeah, so that's why I'm here. It's kind of like a casual setup. It's not like a cool, fancy um makeup tutorial setup like i would usually have i just wanted to see if i can capture anything while i'm talking about it i most likely will not because it always happens that way every time i try to record it's like nah but when i'm not recording it's going crazy so there might be a chance there might be not who knows but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and grab some makeup brushes and some makeup and we're gonna get into the story uh yeah okay we're doing this also, just a disclaimer, I am not going to be sugar coating or adding on to the story. What you hear is exactly what happened. As fun as that could be to a story, I personally don't like it when people do that because I'd rather hear exactly what happened and not hear a fairy tale version of it. So um, everything you're about to hear is exactly what happened as it happened. So for starters, let's talk about why I have such a high chance of getting haunted, not by just one, but many. Um, I collect a lot of old vintage things. I collect diaries from the 1800s, clothing, which is probably not my best idea, um, books, um, makeup, pretty much anything. So the likelihood of getting a spirit attached to it is not that slim. But for this ghost, which I'm actually going to call a demon to be proper because that's what it looked like and that's how it acted like. Um, that one I've seen as a child, so I don't think that that was related to anything that I have now. I'm going to tell you about that story and then tell you about the most recent story. And I'm going to tell you about the encounters my mom and a few friends have had in my room, so. Alright, so when I was a kid, I stayed at my grandpa's apartment. He owned an apartment alongside his own house, and we often lived there for a little while. And what happened was one night, and I think it was pretty much, I would say a few days after we've already settled in, one night I was in the room and the room has two bunk beds and it was like, you know, like a kid's bunk bed and a little dresser. It was a very simple room. And, um, yep, that's about right. And just a disclaimer, I was only about maybe four years old at the time. I have never, never seen a scary movie. I have never seen concepts of ghosts, concepts of demons. I was very sheltered as a child. Um, so my association with a ghost was like this little cute like Halloween decoration. So I saw this man outside of my window, very tall, black hat, black trench coat, bl like black body. It was like a shadow. It was legitimately like a shadow. <clears throat> and when I say tall, I'm talking about like eight foot tall, like beyond the window. Um, and he was like crouched like this, like looking in and I'm like, that must be my dad. No big deal. <laughs> I didn't think anything of it. And then I start staring at it and I become more and more paranoid as I'm looking at it because it's not moving and that's always creepy. And then I started getting scared because like something was very unnatural about that. People, you know, if it was somebody outside, they would be walking around and doing something. It wouldn't just be like, like, you know? So the unnaturalness started to freak me out. And I closed my eyes again to be like, well, I just, I'm just gonna sleep it off. <laughs> I'm just gonna sleep it off. I close my eyes, I get under my covers, I start getting really, really freaked out. I open my eyes again, just after some time. And it could have just been like minute intervals. It felt like it was a long time though. And so I look again and the figure is inside of my room. Oh, that feeling was one of, if, I mean, the story I'm going to tell you next is way scarier, but that moment was one of the scariest times of my life. I closed my eyes again, I went under the blanket, and I just sat there, like, 
frozen and it's it's a horrible feeling because I felt like paralyzed I can move and I've made the decision to move but in that moment that I was waiting I was just like I want to get up and I can't I can I can move I can move my limbs not that I can't but my fear got over my body really really quick he was standing there still and when I was just like hello he ran right through me and I felt this like freezer burn cold go over me and I looked around and everything and he wasn't there. I saw him charge directly at me. So at that point I freaked out, I ran, I went to my parents' room, I was just like there was somebody in the house, um, you know, I don't know what it was, I was like explaining what he looked like and everything like that and they were like, ah, you just had a bad dream. I knew for a fact I was awake um, because I was making choices to move when I got up, there was no moment of like, oh, I'm awake, let me run. I was just like conscious to conscious, through and through. And uh, yeah, that's all I really remember from that moment. After that, I had no ordeals since then. Then comes probably, I would say, I think now it's been like eight months ago, I think. Eight or nine months ago. <sighs> and that one was the worst. It was the worst. And let me make some progress here before I tell you. Basically, he just looked like he had a lot of coal marks on his face. Or like, just like bruises. I don't know what they were. But it was like dark marks everywhere, especially around his eyes, like like a corpse. Something like that. Okay, let's keep going. And, oh no, maybe I should tell you guys about the story about my friends first, because they're very short. And that'll explain this one. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. The first encounter that a friend has had with a feeling, this was a feeling that we didn't see anything, but it was a very strong feeling. First encounter was at a sleepover, and at the sleepover, um, it was like three to four o'clock in the morning, so we're like, we need to go to bed. <laughs> like, we have stuff to do tomorrow. Let's just go to bed. It was really late at night, and so we call it quits. We were laying in bed, and I, I remember staring at the ceiling for a very, very long time, and we just laid there, like, very quietly for about, I feel like 30 to 45 minutes. Slowly, I started feeling this very heavy thick and like the air felt thick like i could not breathe to save my life and we usually keep the ac on at 69 so that doesn't really make any sense and i didn't feel hot but like the the air was like really thick and um i remember my friend was just like do you feel that and my heart sunk i felt my heart go out of my out of my bum because I was like, okay, theories confirmed. I didn't have to tell her anything. She just said that, holy crap, what is going on? <laughs> Let me do some progress. I'm over here looking like boo-boo the fool. Um, sorry, I get carried away in my stories, so. The second encounter was very light. It was actually with my best friend. She always told me that she got this really weird energy in my house. And that, that's why she always was hesitant to stay over and always wanted me to come over, which she never told me until recently. And so I was like, oh, well, you should have told me that because I got stories for you, girl. And um, so that was the second one. There really is no plot line to that. Then comes the the time. I call it the time because it was just ultimate scare. Um... So I was laying in bed texting my best friend. It was again, three to four o'clock in the morning. I often stay up at that time. So it's not, especially now, it's not very strange for me to be up at the time. Um, and what happened was I was laying there. Okay, so my bed was against the wall. So I was laying with like my face against the, like looking at the wall. So I decided to text her that I'm gonna go to bed and I put the phone down. Next thing I know, I feel that weird, exact same negative energy. Not as strong as that one night, but very strong. And I felt that same, same heavy, thick, aired negative energy. And I'm just like, fuck. 
fuck my life. This is not happening today. I literally said, I was like, this cannot be happening again. Um, and so I was like, you know what? No, 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 no. Screw that. I'm going to bed. And um, as I lay there, that feeling doesn't go away. And I started getting almost mad because it's just like, can I have a normal life for once? Like, okay, like, stop. And because it reminded me so much of my childhood and the trauma that I had from my childhood, it was just a really upsetting time to feel that exact same feeling again. So I start seeing the shadow on the wall, which I can't even explain what the heck, how that happens. And I turn my back and I see the figure, but this time not as tall. This time almost like I would say five, 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 six. And the ghost that I remember as a kid was, I would say a solid six to eight feet, depending. I don't know, I was a kid. So the ratio was obviously more dramatic, but it was a lot shorter, a lot more hunched. The same outfit. Um, this time I could see the center of the face way more clearly. Um, before when I was a kid, I just saw straight black and I'm like, I slowly turned back around. And I text Taylor again, I'm just like, uh, Taylor, are you there? She didn't answer. And, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the outfit right now. Okay, so he looked something like this. I could see he had a coat, but he had a hat. And then this kind of fabric that made him look hunched. Like that. Which is hilarious, but when you see that in the dark, So, now that you guys got pretty much what I saw, I'm gonna take this off because it's hot and awful. Oh God, I look crazy. So, so what I saw wasn't anything like sharp fangs or glowing eyes or, you know, molting skin or like anything what you see in movies. It was just a man with bloodshot eyes Okay, I'm sorry, I really do have to take this off. Um, <clears throat> and I, I slowly turned around because I was hoping that it was all in my head. Again, all these things happen and I still think it's all in my head because I try to be as real as possible with myself. Laying there with my back turned against it, I can clearly feel it. It's that feeling you get when you can sense someone staring at you. And I don't budge. I just lay there. Not, not I didn't want to make him think that I saw him. And he made sure that I did what I would believe was trying to kill me, if not trying to say something. And he was choking me really, really, really hard. He had like these really long claws. They weren't like black claws, they were like long nails. And I just centered myself because I felt like I was running out of air. 
enough to die. And I remember just trying to take a deep breath, couldn't, but tried. And I closed my eyes and I just, so I felt like I like collected all the energy I had left and flung my body up almost so much so that I like almost fell off the bed. And I just start booking it. I don't look back. I just started running and running and running. And since then I've been told by countless people, oh, it's just sleep paralysis, no big deal. People get that all the time. And how I knew it was not sleep paralysis was three things. The first thing was when I woke up, I checked my text messages and the messages that I sent to my best friend were there. Especially that final message was, you know, are, are you still are you still there? The second thing that I could tell that it was not sleep paralysis was the fact that I could move the whole time. My limbs were moving. And the third thing was the fact that my mom had the exact same encounter, I would say two months after that. I didn't tell them what it looks like, especially did not tell them what, what it looks like. I didn't tell them what it did to me. So one day, months later, I almost for not forgot, but I definitely got over the incident. And my mom wakes up in the morning. I'm over here ready to start my day, getting some cereal. And my mom was like, you know, I had the strangest dream. And I'm like, really? What kind of dream? And she told me, I had a dream that there was a man and he had a black hat and a black coat. But then there was like a veil, there was like a veil on top. And he was looking over me while I was in bed. And I was like, was he like this tall? She was like, yeah. I was like, was he hunched over? She was like, yes. And I was like, I saw the same thing, but he actually touched me. Did he touch you? And he goes, and she went, no, no, I didn't let. felt like there was somebody kind of around. I can clearly feel it. It's that feeling you get when you can sense someone staring at you. All around the world, people are experiencing the same terrifying vision in their sleep. It was just a black silhouette, completely black. You couldn't, I couldn't make out any features. I never saw a face or eyes, but just this dark kind of outline of a man. Black body, it was like a shadow. It was legitimately like a shadow. I knew for a fact I was awake um, because I was making choices to move. When I got up, there was no moment of like, oh, I'm awake, let me run. I was just like conscious to conscious through and through. But for this ghost, which I'm actually going to call a demon to be proper because that's what it looked like and that's how it acted like. When your heart is beating, you know, uh, so fast you think you're going to die. Because I felt like I was running out of air enough to die. I think I'm gonna regret making this video.